Hi guys and welcome back to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and I'm back with another whiskey review for you today. Um, it's actually a follow-up and the final part of my mini-series on independent bottlers. I know I had a little break in the middle where I looked at some of my recent purchases, which is actually really fun. Um, and thanks for your feedback on that, guys. Really appreciate it and thanks for watching, uh, if you did watch it. If not, check it out. Um, so the Basically, the final instalment of the Independent Bottlers mini-series is like the others, where I will be highlighting some of my go-to, preferred, however you want to say it, uh, Independent Bottlers. Um, and where the other videos I've done, I've basically done two at a time. I'm actually going to cram three into this one, um, just sort of like finish it off with a flourish, so to speak. So, without further ado, guys, the first bottle that I'm going to look at, it did do is going to be this, James E.D. Uh, James E.D. isn't a new name as such, um, basically it was a whiskey bottler way, way, way back when. It has been revived um, and this is basically the, the bottlings that they do. This is actually, they've got two different versions. They've got ones that come in white tubes and white labels where I believe that they're vattings or something potentially. Um, and I believe the ones in the black are single casks, but please, please don't hold me to that because I could well be wrong. But the two that I have today, at the moment, that are out, are a Strathmill, shockingly enough. And look at the colour on that. Holy hell, that is dark. So this is a Strathmill, 11 years old, uh, cask 348030. I'm sure you'll all know it by, uh, by sight. Um, distilled May 2009 and bottled in 2020. First fill Oloroso, but finish. And the thing that I like about James Eady, they actually tell you how long it was finished for. So hopefully you can see, but at the bottom, you might not be able to see on that label. There's quite a lot of information considering it's, it's kind of a little bit dark as well. But basically it was finished for 19 months. Now there's that whole debate, don't get me started. If you, if you put on Twitter in the whiskey community, how long is a finish? It'll just, um, it'll explode um, because we're all geeks and, you know, I mean, these are the kind of things that we talk about on long, cold, wet winter nights. Um, but there we go, James Eady, an 11 year old Strathmill, that was about 60 quid. Probably a little bit more than I'd usually pay for an 11 year old. However, it's Strathmill, which as you've probably already seen, purely from this mini series, I have a bit of a soft spot for. Heavily sherried, good strength, natural colour, non-chill filtered, single cask. There we go. Again, the colour on that one. Now this is a little bit different in the sense that this is actually a single grain from Cambus. Now Cambus, a bit like the Port Dundas that we saw both in Signatory and that Boutique Whiskey Company, Cambus is a closed distillery. It no longer exists. It is gone, finito, kaput, however you want to say it. And this is a 26 year old single cask, single grain. Um, this doesn't say that it was finished in an Oloroso butt. So you can see back on the strath mill, it even says on the front of the tube, hopefully that's zooming in and the, the autofocus is kicking in, because I have changed my phone to, uh, to my older phone, so it's probably not quite as good. However, that says first fill Oloroso butt finish, basically, whereas the canvas doesn't say anything on the tube, but on the label, it just says wood, well, wood, sherry butt. I mean, obviously, it's going to be wood. Um, all casks have to be oak, so I'd like to think that they're, they're wood of some kind. Um, so, yeah, basically sherry butt. Distilled 1993, May the 5th, 1993, bottled in 2019. Bottle at 55.4%. Lovely colour in there. I don't mind tipping upside down onto the cork because I'm just trying to try and get an idea of that, that colour as well for you there. Lovely stuff. So I do have a couple of others from James Eady, but they're under the stairs. These are the two that I am eventually aiming to get to open first. Um, one thing I didn't mention is the, the branding on the front. You'll notice that you've got on the single malt. You've got a nice crossed barley, a um, couple of barley stalks there. And on this side, You've got on a single grain, what I think is wheat, a couple of bits of cross wheat. Now that's because James Eady, one of their, basically when they bought casks, they used to put a 
cross on it on the cask head to identify it as one of theirs. So that's why that's been carried over, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm gonna have a drink. One second, please bear with me. Here's to you, cheers. Sorry, that's very rude of me. Cheers. Oh, do you know what that is? That is nice. That is nice whiskey. Which brings me on to the next bottler. Based in London, originally a wine merchant, now, a world-famous wine and spirits merchant. They're in the same premises that I think they've inhabited for hundreds of years. The guys that work there are fantastic. Their wine selection is fantastic as well. But they're also a great independent bottler and bottler of their own blends. I am, of course, talking about Berry Brothers and Rudd. Now, Berry Brothers were established, I think, somewhere, was it 1700s? Hopefully it tells me. Oh, just shy. 1698 so it's been there for a, quite a while now the two bottles i have here firstly i have a single malt a glen murray i really like glen murray particularly ex bourbon matured glen murray some of the official bottlings get a bit of bad rep because they're kind of what you would see at the cheaper end of the scale for the stuff you find in supermarkets but even then they're official bottlings when you go further and further up Really, really good, and the distillery exclusives are fantastic. And when it comes to Indie Glen Murray, some great, great whiskey out there to be had, really good bargains as well. Now, this particular bottle was bottled exclusively for Amazon. Not a massive fan of Amazon at the minute. Jeff Bezos is getting richer. Everyone else is getting poorer. Um, however, this was on sale. I did pick it up, so I'm guilty you know, of this as much as anyone. But you can't get this anywhere else. It's exclusive to Amazon. It's an 11-year-old Glen Murray. I believe it's first Phil X Bourbon because this was actually produced during Mr. Graham Cole's tenure and he was the one that implemented that revised wood strategy that for me made Glen Murray really, really, really fantastic. For me, Glen Murray spirit mixed with first Phil X Bourbon is a match made in heaven. It just sings. It's fantastic. Um, and so this is a space side, a single malt from Glen Murray, distilled in 2007, bottled in 2019. So it's just shy of 12 years old, ergo. 11 years old, so it must be a couple of months short. A single cask, it's a bottle of 46%, it's non-chill filtered, natural colour. This costs about, which I think it should cost about £53, but I got it on, on offer for just shy of 40 um, a couple of months back. But, uh, but there we go, so there's Berry Brothers and Rudd single malt there. Now, the spirit guys at, at uh, Berry Brothers are fantastic. Rob in particular, who I, who I know quite well, really, really nice guy. <laughs> Um, you find that they get some really, really high-end distillate and really, really good quality casks as well. They've got very, very good um, spirit buyers on their side. Now, this brings me on to the next bottle. Now, this is a blended malt. So, Berry Brothers don't just do their single malt bottlings, okay? They actually have their own blended range as well, as well as rum, as well as cognac, etc., etc., but this is their sherry cask blended malt. Now, this is my third or fourth bottle of this um, over the last few years. It's something that I've had um, on and off. It's bottled at 44.2%. Now, I know it's sherry, I know it's sherry but cask mature, but I do believe it is not natural colour. So I think there is added colour in there. I could be wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's the case. As to chill filtration, does it tell me on the bottle? No, so chances are it could well be chill filtered as well. However, this retails usually for under 40 quid. Now, historically, Berry Brothers have what you could say is a special relationship with Speyside at Glenrothes. Um, so there are certain conspiracy theorists online that say that this is predominantly heavily shared Glenrothes. Now, I have had very, very different experiences with different batches of this. I have mentioned things like batch variation before now. This particular batch is probably the best, and that's what's in this glass, is probably the best that I've had in the last couple of years. The last one was nice. It was sippable, it was quaffable. This is a lot more intense for me this time. Could just be me, but that's the way of whiskey. And you know that I'm drinking it in a tumbler, nice little rocks glass there. I do the majority of my drinking in these nowadays when I'm not sitting there analysing things. Sometimes I just want to sit down with a dram like this. Particularly a lovely blended malt, a little bit sherry, 
and just sit back and enjoy it. I don't have to overanalyze it. It's good value. It's well made, very tasty indeed. So there's Berry Brothers and Rudd as well. Let's grab another sip of this. Hmm. Oh yes. Oh yes. Right. Now guys, that brings me on to my third and final independent bottler. Now, these guys are, in my opinion, probably one of the most overlooked independent bottlers in the Scotch whiskey market. Um, I mean that in a good way and a bad way, um, because potentially that may change now, I guess. I'm not saying I'm an influencer or anything, because clearly I'm not. Um, they are Scottish based, so based in Scotland, really nice people. I've got a couple of bottles here from them. Um, without further ado, it's AD Rattray. So AD Rattray. Now, hopefully you'll have heard of them. Now I'm holding a couple of different, different boxes and bottles. Just one second, I've got another one down here. There we go. Um, and basically, again, they've been around for a while. They've been around for a long time. They've just kind of been doing their thing in, you know, in their own way. Um, they're not as well known as your big guys, I suppose you'd say, like Gordon McPhail. You've probably noticed an absence of Gordon McPhail, uh, which I might as well address actually while I'm here. I used to have a lot of it. I used to buy Gordon McPhail religiously because it used to be very, very affordable, good value for money, very high quality. Following their revamp of the range about three or four years ago, it became more expensive and I could find better alternatives with other bottlers for less. That's why. I, have, I haven't bought a Gordon McPhail since they revamped the range, I'll be honest. It's nothing against Gordon McPhail, it's just I don't see value in it anymore um, at that kind of level. To be honest, I, I, can, you know, I can find a 2008 uh, Bal Blair somewhere else. Um, for example, that's actually quite, that wasn't intentional, but this, going back to AD Rattery, this is from the, from the cask range. They've got a few different ranges. So you have from the casks. Now this is a limited, I believe, single cask run that they have occasionally on their website. You can even get what you want written on the label as well as a, as a gift, which is a nice touch. So I just got my name and malt box on there. This got delivered today. So it's quite timely that, that this is featuring uh, because I was going to record this last night and I had the other two available and then this came today, so that's pretty cool. And this is, speaking of Bal Blair, a 2011 nine-year-old sherried Bal Blair. And I mean, even in independent bottling circles, Bal Blair isn't particularly cheap because a lot of it is retained for their own single malt or for blends. And, you know, I mean, Bal Blair, again, the official bottling range for me isn't as good anymore. So I see that, which was 50 quid, as much better value than their, say, 15 year old, their, their own bottling 15 year old or their 12 year old, which is pretty much just shy of 50 quid anyway. And we're talking 59.1% natural color, non chill filtered single cask Sherry Bal Blair. Now you then have the warehouse collection. And the warehouse collection, if I remember correctly, is effectively bin ends. And it happens in whiskey. Use parcels of whiskey for blending. Use parcels of whiskey for certain releases. Sometimes you've got some left over. Sometimes you have a run that's just selling them in general as a different range and they might not all sell out. Now this is a nine-year-old Ardmore, fully matured in ex-bourbon. And for me, again, ex-bourbon is my preferred maturation choice. And for me, a bit like the Glen Murray, Ardmore really works well with ex-bourbon. Um, they've got a little uh, tasting note on the bottom. It's not a big four paragraph blurb. It's just a really nice straight to the point grilled peach and wood smoke, which I think is really nice. 59.5% um, natural colour, non-chill filters. This cost, I think, 45 or 50 quid. I think it was 45, to be honest, off the top of my head. But I tried this as part of a, a Twitter tasting, a tweet tasting uh, a few months back and I loved it. Um, we also had in that a Williamson, which is a Laphroaig. Going back to what we were saying a couple of uh, a couple of days ago in one of the other reviews about uh, single malts with different names or teaspoon malts with different names. Now this is their other range, and this is the cask range. So this is a cask Orkney, eighteen year old, and this is a drum that uh, I first tried at the pot still in Glasgow. Oh, wow, must must be about three or four years ago now. 
it's going back a few years um, and basically I bought one it was closed for ages I, re I remember really enjoying it but it was closed for ages I kept meaning to get around to it but a bit like all the other stuff that you've seen here that's already closed I just kept drinking other stuff and other things kept getting in the way however I have been making a bit of a dent in this recently and it is fantastic now this is an 18 year old single malt it's non-chill filtered natural color bottle at 46 percent there's only two distilleries on Orkney and it's an 18 year old it's slightly peated it's got nice buttery notes of buttery heather <laughs> I guess you could say a bit of smoke a bit of honey I'll leave you to decide which distillery on Orkney this derives from. This retails at around 60 to 65 pounds of full RRP. Now, if we think about the official bottling from that, what is the potential distillery on Orkney, you're looking at 100 quid for something that's presented at lower strength. What I believe to be natural colour. However, I think it's chill filters as well. I think. So we're looking at a, a nice small batched 18 year old single malt from Orkney 60 odd quid they've also got it's not just exclusive to Orkney the cask range covers basically a couple of the whiskey regions this is the only one that isn't named specifically well there's Isla basically it's got cask Isla you've got cask Speyside which I've actually got a little sample of here basically the cask Orkney is probably the most specific one that they've got because Orkney isn't one island with two distilleries. Isla, at least, there's a little bit of sort of chance as to what distillery it might be. One other good thing about AD Rattray is the service. And this is what sets a few of the independent bottlers apart from some of the bigger guys, both in the independent bottling space and in the official bottling space. This, this was 50 quid. So I've already, I've already preached to the choir as to how good value I feel that is. A nine-year-old Sherry Barblair at cast strength, single cask with my name on it. It's fifty pounds. Came with free delivery. You can put you can put what you want on the label. It came really nicely wrapped in tissue. Came the next day. It also came with a little sample of their cask space. I ten-year-old included as well for no additional charge. And they do that with everyone. They just put an additional sample in there, which I think is really nice. And this was actually one that I was considering looking at for the blog as well. So it's kind of timed quite well. So Ad Rattery. Going back to where we were, we've got from the cask, we have the warehouse collection and we have the cask range as well. I would highly recommend this myself. A review will be coming soon, either on the channel or on the, uh, the website, maltboxwhiskey.com. Again, same with this. This will be getting reviewed either on the channel or at maltboxwhiskey.com. I have already reviewed the, <laughs> the Berry Brothers Glen Murray at maltboxwhiskey.com. And with that note, guys, I'm going to box it off. Um, just as soon as I've had another one of these. Mm. Yeah, I needed that. So, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to box it off now. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Maltbox, Instagram at Maltbox Whiskey. Again, to reiterate, I'm on the internet now as well, on the website at maltboxwhiskey.com. I do have a Patron that I have started on the sly. I've not preached it, I've not pushed it out to anyone because it's entirely up to you if you want to do it or not. It's, you know, I'm not going to push the matter. Uh, thank you if you do, no problem if you don't. And on that note as well, feel free to subscribe. It's up to you. Thanks guys, see you soon.